for those in the audience getting to know you for the very first time. Care to share where you were born? I was born in Pompano Beach, Florida. And care to share where you were raised as well? I was raised in Georgia. Like, north, north of Atlanta. And does it get any more specific than that for you? Well, I moved from Florida, I moved to Gwinnett. I've been there damn near my... I went to school there. High school. Fucking... Uh... Right, right after high school is when I started like traveling and shit. So yeah, we raised in. Now diving a little bit deeper here, what age were you when you made that move from Florida to Georgia, and what was that reason back then? Mm. If you know it, I was young. I went super young, but I was like, or grade perhaps if you don't know the age, like first second grade or some shit like that. And why? Yes. Family issues, job issues. Family shit. My parents was just, we gotta get the fuck out of Florida. It was always like, too many Haitians. He was trying to get away, trying to... Uh. And as far as currently, where do you reside these days? Was there a certain age when you officially leave Gwinnett County? Uh, officially? I yeah, see. you move out of Gwinnett. Like 20. I was on probation out here for like a couple years and shit. As soon as I got off, I went to New York. I turned 21 there. I was there for a couple months. Back and forth. Atlanta, and just LA and shit like that. I spent a lot of time in Florida. Yeah, probably like 20, it's like, yeah, like 19, 20 when I was like really out of there, like never coming back to this type of shit. And was it a certain portion of New York for you? Bushwick. And when you go back down to Florida, uh, was it Pompano Beach or other parts of Florida back then for you? When I went my older years, I was in Miami. Um, just my family, like my mom's side of the family, and like some of my pop's side of the family, they all still in Broward and shit. But I don't really know. I don't know. I probably know like two people from my dad's side of the family. And the rest is just, I know my mom's side. And when it comes to the internet, I don't know if you're familiar with the website titled FamousBirthdays.com or not, but they have your birthplace listed as Columbia, South Carolina. Get her tweet him. Ain't nobody ever asked me. Now, with you being a recording artist, there are some recording artists that may stay in Atlanta, but at some point they may leave to a Los Angeles, a New York City for music, music industry things, and so forth. Was there any thoughts on that? I lived in LA for a couple years. Okay. Um, I moved back to Atlanta in 2020, right before, yeah, right before COVID hit. From LA, and I was probably in LA for like four or five years type shit. I always be back and forth and shit, but um, like live there, live there like at least three, four years. So you have done the LA thing. Now, sometimes people, once they enter LA, they stay in LA. They don't go back to maybe previous areas that they've been to uh, for a permanent residence. Uh, why only that length of time there? Why not stay there longer? Things shit, of that nature. My shit got burnt. She got burnt. Fucking, I don't know if I would have moved back if shit didn't happen. Like, we got, old apartment got raided and shit for guns and all this extra ass shit. Um, that really did it for me. I'm like, bro, I'm out of here. Um, 
Cause I still don't know how the fuck they decided to rate our shit. But yeah. Is that scenario closed at this point? Whatever took place there? Yeah. Okay. Now, was that your first time ever experiencing a raid? Yeah. Who was the raid by and what was that like? Who was it by? Yes. Was that a raid from the ATF, the FBI, local police? Uh, Maybe another jurisdiction, perhaps? I don't know. I can't give you no specifics. I just know it was like 12 Captain Americas in there suited up and shit. Um, they came for guns, so they were like heavily armed and fucking bulletproof vest up and shit. So I don't know what the fuck you call them niggas, but that shit was fried. It was like six in the morning, seven in the morning or some shit. It's like a movie scene. It was fucking retarded. Now, there are people that have seen this sort of thing on newscasts, video footage on YouTube of a raid, but never have experienced one. Uh, any further insight on what a raid feels like or what it's like? So, for example, you mentioned that this was in the morning. Were you already up, perhaps? Or did this wake you up? Did this startle you? How did you... I was asleep. I think I might be. I don't know if I'm a heavy sleeper or not, but I didn't hear nothing. Um, there was a female who briefed me at the time, and she heard it. She woke me up, and then... Try to say like so you're when you're other bitches. I'm like, bro, what? Then I went outside to go see what it was, and my roommate at the time was standing in front of the front door in the apartment. And then when I got out there, it was just like it's LA County open up the whole little shit. Before the niggas opened the door, that shit swung open. Boom. I'm like 15. White folks just ran in the crib. Guns drawn, get on the ground, all type of wow shit. And assuming you were detained at that point? Yeah. Plastic ties, actual handcuffs? Or did they just sit you down somewhere while they were- For sure detained. I don't remember if it was cuffs or just like plastic shit or not, but detained, everybody in the Three of us, four of us in the crib at the time. Everybody detained. They just ripped the crib apart, looking for guns and shit. And how long did that take place? You were, you were detained. How long did that experience last after that, once you were detained? Like, a couple hours for sure. Like, I want to say like three, four hours. And as they're, you know combing through uh, personal items and things of that nature in that said apartment, are law, is law enforcement or some type of professional just uh, having you detained in that one spot? Are they asking you questions? Are they... Just pressing everybody about shit. Shit that you're like, how the fuck do you know that? All type of weird shit. Um, showing us random for shit they seen and shit. Like, it's fried, bro. It's crazy. I'm like, where the fuck is, what the fuck? Like, they got your text messages printed out in full color. Like your iPhone screen, how you see it, is printed out in full color. And they asking questions and shit, and you're like, no. And they're like, so what about this? I'm like, oh, what the fuck? So they're doing a full on questioning while you're detained. Yeah. And um, the raid happens. It completes itself after a couple hours, as you described. What happens at that point? You're let go? Do they arrest you, take you in? They let me go that day. I actually went on tour. I had a fight to Europe that same day. They took my phone, laptop, the guns, Fucking, yeah, we had a fight to Germany that day. Still made it, hit T-Mobile, grabbed my shit, went to Germany, did like however many shows, 
came back, got arrested like a week later, they came back again. Or whatever, yeah. We was probably gone for like almost a month, two, three weeks. As soon as I get back, they came back and locked me up. And what was the culmination of the end of this scenario? What'd that mean? What ends up happening, in short? Uh, were there charges, charges dismissed? Yeah. Oh, probably was sticky for a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, fought that shit for like a year. Tried the lawyers and all that shit. And fucking Michael Goldstein. Shout out, bro. Yeah, it was probation for like three years at the time. They tried to say, uh, intent to distribute assault rifles or some wild shit like that. I don't know what it got dropped to, I don't know, but got the little three year probation off. We had to turn ourselves in for a little bit. Ended up getting out early because of COVID. Um, shit over now. I just got out probation in November. Now, this whole entire scenario, how much do you think this cost you in terms of money? Whether it was the attorney, uh, the end of the negotiated ending of this case, uh, time that was taken away from you, from maybe things you could have been doing as far as like music or whatever the case may be. Just what do you think, if you could sum it up in a monetary amount, do you think this entire process, any time you've had to deal with this, actually cost you? It's real money? Shit. Flights the whole COVID twice a month, because I was already living, I was living in Atlanta when the case started. So I had to fly to LA for court, fly back every month. Um, shit, the bond, whatever the fuck that shit cost, it was like 30, 40 bands, whatever the lawyer was. Cool little 80, 100 ball for the situation or some shit. And that's a rough amount. What about any of those items that were taken during the raid, like cell phones, laptops? Do you get any of that stuff back? I did. I recently got that shit back. Um, I got the laptop, the phone back. Of course, I didn't get the, the guns back. Um, but yeah, that's all they took. Everything else is all bullshit for real. It's really my laptop, my phone at the time. And it's... I was without that laptop and phone for like three, four years, so it didn't even matter. Now, you say it doesn't matter, but was there any music on that laptop? Were there files on that laptop for sessions, perhaps? Or if it was on external drive and you were- definitely shit on there. From at the time, who I was recording with, well, she's passed away now, but a bunch of shit from him that I wanted to have. Diego RIP. And you were able to achieve, achieve that. I mean, retrieve that. Yeah. And when you were able to boot that laptop on or that phone on, was it just like nothing had ever happened? Like it was like it was however way you left it then and there from that particular day? Yeah. Did it look like it had been combed through at all? Did it look like it had been toyed with, for lack of a better phrase, messed with? It's been so long, you know what I'm saying? By the time I got that shit back, it didn't matter. Um, just wiped them shits, got what I needed. I get a laptop away. I don't know where the fuck the phone at now. And one final question I want to remind in this whole segment about that raid. What did that look like once you... Uh, finished with the detainment, before you jetted off to the T-Mobile store and, and those flights, what did the inside of the apartment look like after they had rummaged through everything? Disrespectful. Fucked up. Like, it's really smoked, man. It was like, bro, what the fuck? They fucked it up, completely trashed it. <sighs> yeah, that shit was crazy. What about any safes at the time? I don't know if you had any safes at the time. Did they open those up and things of that nature as well? 
I personally didn't have a safe at my um, at my crib, but I had a co-defendant at crib got raided at the same time my crib got raided. He had a safe. But if you have a safe in your house, don't tell, don't open it for the police. You don't have to. It's food for thought or whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? Don't you don't gotta open that shit. They gotta figure that shit out. And your lawyer will give you the sauce. And speaking of lawyers, how much do you think just the lawyer itself had cost you? You mentioned an overall figure, but... Man, I don't even know, man. Bread, though. My actual money. Was that lawyer in particular worth it for this case? Yeah. For sure. Because I definitely would have went to jail or prison, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Yeah. And what, no, that wasn't one of the cases you could just go no lawyer. 